What we're going to be dealing with tonight is assertions. Now, what we have done so far is created what we call a preliminary entity relationship diagram. That's just a diagram that has the entities and the relationships on uh, the relationships between the entities. Tonight, what we're going to look at is something called assertions. Now, what an assertion is, it's an actual factual statement about our database or about the entities in the database and how they are related to each other. This is very important because what we need to do after that is get a list of assertions and after we have a list of the assertions, take these assertions back to the client and have the client verify that each assertion is indeed true. Assertions are actually based on mathematics, uh, an area of mathematics called predicate mathematics. And yes, predicate mathematics uh, usually have true-false parts and the assertion just really deals with the true part of uh, the, the predicate. So what you normally do is you have your two entities, you have the relationship, and then you create two assertions. So each relationship will yield two assertions. But before, they do, before we do that, there are a couple of things that we need to look at. Uh, they are optionality, cardinality, and entity occurrence. Optionality says what can and must happen in a relationship. Cardinality is basically a number. And the number is related to the occurrences. If cardinality says how many occurrences we can have. And an entity occurrence is an actual instance of an entity. Another name for it, instead of stating entity occurrence, is entity instance. Now, these three are very important when you're listing your assertion. And that is because the optionality, the cardinality, and the entity occurrence all occur in a particular order when you're stating the assertion. Our optionality and our cardinality take on certain values. Now, there's an optionality of 0 and 1. 0 means can. Must is 1. And cardinality is usually a number. Uh, in certain instances, uh, you might find that... Uh, you will write the number, the actual number in the relationship. In our case, we will have two values, 1 and n. 1 represents only one entity instance in the relationship, and n represents many or more than one, or at least one. What I actually specify in the book is uh, at least one or many. That's what N stands for, and one stands for only one. So these are very important. And again, when you're writing out uh, an assertion, all of these come into play. The question is now, how do these come into play when we are listing and writing our assertions? And again, we're going to use an example for that. The easiest example is the one to do with the uh, HR system. So let's have a look at that one. What we have here is one relationship and two entities. Now, you have to write an assertion for every relationship. But every relationship will give you two assertions. Let's take, for example, this is entity A and this is entity B. Uh, you need in order to get your two assertions, you will look at it from entity A to entity B, and then you will look at it again from entity B to entity A, and then you will write out your assertion. Question is now, how do you write that assertion? There's usually a rule and a pattern and a way in which you write your assertion. The assertion always begins and ends with an entity, and the relationship is always in the middle just like it is here. It's just that in between that, you will put things like your optionality and your cardinality. So you start off with the entity occurrence, 
I'll put that in shorthand. Then you have the optionality. Then you have the relationship. Let's use a different color for that. Then you have the cardinality. And then you have the entity occurrence once again. But this entity occurrence and this entity occurrence are different. There is usually entity A and entity B, and these are the, this is the occurrence for entity A, and this is the occurrence for entity B. That's if you're looking at it in this way. And then when you're looking at it the other way, you start with entity B, and then you end with entity A. Are we good so far? Right, the question is how do we fill this in? That's what you want to know. Okay. In this case here, you can say something like, an employee optionality can and must now look at the entire thing an employee can or must fill uh, uh, positions shouldn't you have a position at the company you work at we do. Exactly. Yes. In order to be an employee, you must have a position. Employees, I put this here. An employee must relationship fill cardinality here one and n. At one. least one, and many, one. or only one? Well, at least one, sir. Is it at least one, many, or only one? At least one. At least one. <coughs> and the other entity? So this here now makes up simple sentence. Your assertion. A simple sentence. Now this here must be factual and this here you have to check back with the uh, person that you're designing the database for, with the client. And for every two, for every relationship you will have two of these. I have just did it one way, looking at it this way. We will then go back now and look at it the other way. So each relationship gives you two assertions. This is just the first one. Let's have a look at it again in its entirety to see if it makes sense and if it's correct. Again, the only way to verify if it's correct is with the person that you or a person, the company that you're designing the database for. An employee must fill at least one position. Makes sense, doesn't it? Now we're gonna use this again and we're gonna look at it the other way around. So again, looking at it, looking at things the other way, we're starting with positions. So it's either a position or positions. So let's start with a position. Can or must be filled? Must. Sure. Can. Can. We can have vacancies. And then we have our relationship be filled. And then we put by. You might have to put in a few words to pad it off in order for it to make sense. Cardinality. Only one, at least one, many. Many. At least one, two, many. Yeah, at least one. Mm -hmm. At least one. So, well, it says a position. Let me say, let me say at least one. Right. Now, here is where you would need to conform with the 
uh, person you're designing the database for. Now, let's say I put this here, many, and then over here, we have employees. A position can be filled by many employees. This makes sense only if you're tracking the position over time and you're not looking at the position as it is currently. You understand? No. You, have to, you have to confirm if this is what the person that you're designing the database for wants. Because they might say to you, okay, for let's say the general manager position, that position over the course of five years or 10 years will be held by different employees. And they would like to know, okay, who held this position when and for how long and that kind of thing. And also if you want to track the employee to see what positions they have held over time. Okay, was a junior clerk, then a senior clerk, then a junior manager, then a senior manager. If they want to track that, then this here makes sense. So you see why when you have completed your assertions, you need to go back to whoever it is that you're designing the database for to confirm with them that these assertions are correct. And this is absolutely vital because mistakes that you make here are very difficult to fix. Because once you have done this here, this goes into the detailed ER diagram and it goes into the crow's foot diagram and it's difficult to change after this. Very, very difficult to change after this. So you want to ensure that this here is correct. In order to, to obtain your assertions, you need to have the preliminary ER diagram that doesn't have anything on that diagram. And you look at each diamond, and each diamond there represents a relationship. And each relationship will give you two assertions. One assertion when you look at it from entity A to entity B, and another assertion when you look at it from entity B to entity A. So each relationship yields two assertions. There's a particular order in which you write the assertion. That is, you start with the entity occurrence or the entity instance, you then have the optionality, then you have the relationship, then you have the cardinality, and you end with the entity occurrence of the other entity. So we always have two entities and a relationship in play. Entity, entity, relationship, optionality, cardinality. And you start off. The example I have here, we start with entity B, and we come across a position, Optionality, can or must, can be filled by many employees. It might be difficult to get the verb in the middle exactly the way you want it, but you might have to pad it by a few modifiers on either side. But generally, you start and you end with uh, the entity occurrence. And the relationship is in the middle, and then you have your optionality and your cardinality. It's supposed to make sense. You're supposed to be able to take it back to the person you're designing the database for and they're supposed to confirm whether or not this is correct. Because by definition, remember, an assertion is a true and factual statement about your database. So when you finish with your assertions, they're supposed to be true and factual statements that the person you're designing the database for will say, yes, this is true, no, this is not true. There's no in-between. There's no maybe, sometimes, or that kind of thing. It's either true or it's not true. That's, by definition, what an assertion is.